Hello to all of our listeners, and welcome back to The Parent's Solution. This is your one-stop shop for all things educational. I am your host, Kimberly, and today I'm chatting about online schooling, the benefits and the flaws and the perspective that I'm bringing to you regarding this. So over the past two years, online schooling has just gradually become the norm. The mainstream education system has integrated their regular processes into current technology in order to remedy perceived health concerns uh, and, and lockdowns. I think it's really important for us as teachers and parents and caretakers and guardians to get a fresh perspective on the education services that are being offered online to find out if they're truly beneficial or if there are some serious concerns. So some of the benefits. Now, online studying, I think, and online schooling is an important learning opportunity because students are taught how to navigate through courses and exams and presentations on the internet. Online learning, regardless of how it's done, um, is is creating students who are computer literate. And this is a a non-negotiable, I would say an absolute benefit for young learners because as society delves more and more into technological advances, requiring a firm and and solid knowledge of computer programs uh, for even entry-level positions is, is a definite advantage. So learning online also helps children to focus on their studies as if it's done correctly, they would be experiencing more one-on-one time with the teacher. Um, Now, that's obviously through individual and small group courses and classes. I'm not referring to the public education system that has stuck anywhere from 15 to 30 children in in an online classroom. The type of learning online, though, in this sort of small group uh, or individual course or class, it's very time specific and it can be condensed in order to truly occupy or take up only the necessary amount of time that's needed to understand a subject rather than all of the additional filler uh, and nonsense that is presented otherwise in the public education system. Now, the greatest benefit of online learning is that it forces the parents or the caretakers to get involved. And I use force with a with a grain of salt here because you shouldn't really have to be forced to get involved in your child's education. You should already be involved in your child's education. And teaching children online brings the classroom inside the home. And it, on that note, it's very, very smart for parents and caretakers and guardians to be aware of what the school system is teaching their child. As a caretaker or a parent, do not be afraid to question or challenge the teacher on the curriculum if you have concerns about the subject matter, because you now get to be in on what your child is learning, and you should have more say than ever before, whether that's in a traditional school system or in an alternative education system. If you find yourself in this situation, you need to take advantage of it. You need to make sure that your voice is heard so that your child's teachers or teacher Uh, know that they have an active and alert parent who's interested in making sure that their child receives the best education they deserve. Now, those are some of the benefits. Let's chat about the flaws for a second. Uh, the, The biggest concern for many parents, of course, is the amount of screen time that online learning requires. Totally understandable. The traditional school system, the public school system, has transferred its regular processes to the computer, and they still are requiring six hours of screen time for the students, or something of that sort. And that's a definite problem, because a child should not, under any circumstances, be in front of a screen for six hours on a regular basis, let alone a daily basis. Too much screen time can encourage a sedentary lifestyle, which may lead to health problems, of course, such as obesity, and it can also cause issues with a child's attention span as images and videos are quickly flipping from one thing to the next. Life on the screen has a sneaky way of trumping in-person reality, so it's also important for parents and guardians and caretakers to be worry of allowing their child to drain days away in front of the computer or the television or their cell phone, even if it is for educational purposes. There's got to be a limit. When there's too much emphasis on the virtual world, the danger is that the child will not know how to properly interact in person. And this shows up in children who are not able to assertively hold a conversation or comfortably hold a conversation, who do not know how to utilize confident body language, or who do not understand how to react with this, or genuine compassion, or care in in physically or mentally demanding circumstances. 
So how do we look at this overall? I think that the best way to look at the online learning dilemma is to take it for what it is, the good and the bad, and you have to be prepared to not only find solutions, but instill them into how your child experiences school. One of the most obvious solutions to the traditional public school learning environment, whether it's online or in person, is alternative learning. There are hybrid learning options that balance hands-on and interactive activities with e-learning. This may be a good choice for you if you have enough time in the day to set aside and teach your child. Uh, And if you don't have enough time in the day, perhaps you have someone else teach them. Now, that's within a homeschooling or an alternative education program, of course. This option also works well because there is some screen time where you as a parent or a caretaker can get other work done. The screen time requirements, though, are much less than the traditional school system. So you don't have to worry about sticking your child in front of a screen for six plus hours a day. Another alternative is to have a conversation with your child's teacher. If if you're going to be going with the public school system and and staying within that realm, find out if there's a way that they can condense the screen time because perhaps they can give you an outline of the curriculum with links to the required teachings or webinars. And now that, of course, requires a lot of extra work on your part to ensure that your child's keeping up to the academic standards. But it is worth it to ask. The worst thing that they can say is no. And choosing that route is going to allow you to carve out more outdoor and or off screen time for your child so that they can have a well-balanced learning experience. Now, if these two options I've mentioned don't work for you, there are still some simple and powerful steps that you can take to limit that screen time. Because as a parent or a caretaker, you can have a home rule of no screens after a certain time in the day, and maybe for a certain day on the weekend as well. You can fill in that no screen gap with family time, and it's the perfect chance for outdoor discovery, um, for building book knowledge, and for feeding your child's imagination to help them think outside the box. If you not only enforce the screen-free time, but also follow it yourself, which a lot of my parents do, You will see a positive increase in the strength of your relationship with your child and your depth of observation into their life, and really the amount of knowledge that they will consume on a daily basis. Please remember that sometimes it is the act of stepping away from the screen and the real-life comparison that it brings that helps children to see that they are scientists, they're magicians, they're geniuses, and they're smarter than any traditional exam could ever show them. If you have any comments or questions, either about this issue or others that have come up for you, you can always find me on social media. It's Star Students on Facebook and LinkedIn or starstudents.learning on Instagram. You can also reach out through email, which is all over social media channels. Thank you, as always, so much for listening, and I'll be back next week.